Oh, hey! Scripture of the day. I am so sorry I missed you the other day. Oh, we've got something serious we need to talk about. Yeah, yeah, you can go on a walk right now. Oh, good. This is really important that we get into this today. So let's do one of our favorite things. Let's walk and let's talk about the scripture of the day. Welcome to Central Park, and it is another beautiful day here in Huntington Beach. And I'm sorry if I confused our regulars here on Scripture of the Day, because we are walking the other way around the park today. And I want to say I'm sorry for missing a day, uh, uh, missing one of our videos. Have you ever missed a day of Bible reading before? You will not get any judgment here because I have missed many days of Bible reading throughout my Christian life. Sometimes it happens maybe because you're not feeling well, you're, you're a little under the weather. Sometimes maybe your schedule changes, you're not on your normal routine. And so you end up missing a day of getting into God's word. And here's what I've learned. Instead of beating yourself up, instead of feeling bad about it, I just get right back into the Bible the next day. And so we are gonna do not one, but two chapters here in this video. Hebrews chapter three is where we're going to begin. And uh, Hebrews chapter three, hopefully you've already read it, but it gets back to the main theme of the book of Hebrews, which is consider Jesus. That's who we're here to think about. Uh, chapters one and two taught us about the deity and humanity of Jesus as the God man. And so uh, chapter three is saying Jesus is actually actually worthy of more glory than Moses. That's what it says in verse three. Moses was faithful to God, Jesus was faithful to God, but Moses was faithful as a servant in the house. Jesus, he's the son of the master of the house. Jesus is the builder of the house. So I just, I just wanna say, after missing a day, I feel so bad, and I wanna say to all of you how much I appreciate all of you who are reading the Bible along with us. In fact, I wanna thank a lot of you who leave comments. They are a great source of encouragement to me. In fact, we did a couple of street races with our cross references and Hebrews chapter one, I told you I would re-gift some of my birthday gifts. I got so many gift cards from people at our church. There's no way I could use them all. So Brendan White, you're the winner from Hebrews one street race. You're going to Fantastic Cafe, my friend. Uh, we've been there getting a burrito together on scripture of the day before. So Brendan, there you go, sir. Thank you for your encouragement. And then Hebrews 2, Katie Lupia. Katie, thank you for your encouragement, for getting into all those cross references. I got a few gift cards to In-N-Out Burger. And so I hope you'll enjoy some meat and cheese. I'll make sure I get these to you guys, maybe at your fellowship groups uh, this week, but congratulations. But I hope you're in for reading Hebrews chapter three. So not only is the theme that Jesus is greater a big deal in the book of Hebrews, but another theme are the warnings against falling away from the faith. And chapter three really gets us into that idea and it continues into chapter four. And so I wanna say, hey, if you're just casually watching this video, uh, we're gonna keep walking and talking. And I wanna encourage you to really listen to what the scripture is saying. Because at our church, I have known some people that I considered my brothers in Christ who just over the last few years have fallen away from the faith. And we are gonna get warned here today that this could happen to any of us. And so we need to encourage one another. We need to make sure that our hearts don't get hard. We need to actually, it's gonna say, have a fear of falling away. So let's keep walking and let's keep talking and let's pay attention to the scripture. So the writer of Hebrews uses Psalm 95, seven to 11 as his text of scripture. And he basically explains this text, the rest of chapter three and into today's scripture of the day, Hebrews chapter four. And so what he's doing is he's taking us back to when the Israelites heard from God, but they hardened their heart. In fact, it says in Hebrews chapter three, verse 10, that they went astray 
in their heart and therefore they don't know the rest of God. So then, and this is a very important verse, and hopefully you can open your Bible and look at this with me, because this is something we gotta watch out for at Compass HB. It says, take care, brothers, and literally it's like, look, brothers, watch out, brothers. So when we say watch out, that's literally what it says right here. Watch out, brothers, lest there be in any of you this same evil, unbelieving heart. So the logic here is, if they had Moses and they didn't listen, well, we've got something greater. We've got Jesus. We should definitely listen to what Jesus says. But the warning is, you can harden your heart and not listen, and you can go astray. This can happen to anyone. Look at the Israelites as an example. Don't think you're above the Israelites. In fact, if you've been a Christian for any length of time going to church, you have seen people who it seemed to you like they were just as into it as you were. And they seemed like your brother or your sister in Christ. But then, unfortunately, you have seen them fall away. And I've had to deal with this as a really hard part of being a Christian. This has been, for me, maybe the hardest part of following Jesus myself is watching people that I've come to know and love fall away from their faith and they no longer believe in Jesus. And it says, watch out, you could have this evil, unbelieving heart leading you to fall away. In fact, then it goes on to say, that's why we exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. So when I meet with a brother or sister, I'm not just assuming they're doing fine and they're growing in the Lord and they're encouraged in their faith. I'm encouraging them. I'm acting like they need to be provoked and spurred on and called alongside of so, so that I could be someone who helps them persevere, who keeps them going, so to speak. This, God used this passage in my life in a powerful way when I, was in, when I was in college and I realized the things I said to other people, and I'm not talking about preaching a sermon, I'm not talking about making a video, I'm just saying the things I said to other people on a daily basis, could, God could use that as a means of grace to encourage them to keep going in their faith. And so we got to take encouraging one another seriously. That is why we started doing scripture of the day, because we wanted there to be daily encouragement from the word. And this is me trying to speak to you saying, hey, don't fall away. Don't get led astray. Get God's word in your heart today and keep going in your faith in Jesus. Hey, if today's a day, then I'm here to encourage you. This is why it is a big deal when we miss a day. This is why we don't want to have a casual attitude to towards getting in the scripture and towards encouraging one another on a daily basis because we don't want to let an evil heart lead us to fall away. We want to encourage one another. While we've got a chance today, let's keep going for Jesus Christ all the way to the end. I'm here to encourage you today. Don't give up on your faith. If you're having a hard time in your faith, will you please reach out to me? I would love to talk to you about it because that's the warning here. Look what happened to Israel. They, they had God speaking to them through Moses, through the angels, through the, through the law, but they didn't listen. And don't let that happen to you. Now that Jesus is speaking to us through uh, the new covenant, through this even book of Hebrews. Now look at what it says in chapter four, moving into today's scripture of the day, chapter four, verse one, it says, therefore, since there's still this promise of rest, so he's still developing Psalm 95, seven to 11, and there's been this strong warning about falling away. Well now, do you wanna enter the rest? Look what it says. It says, let us fear, lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. Literally, it's using fear of falling away that that might be a motivation for us today, that I would be afraid of myself falling away and I would be afraid of people in my fellowship group, the guy I'm taking through partners, my friend who's been a Christian with me for a while, that I would have a fear, it says, that we would fail to reach the rest of God. A lot of people today, they act like fear is a bad motivation. If you believe that, you're gonna have a hard time with the book of Hebrews because the book of Hebrews is gonna use warnings. Like, hey, if, if you're not careful, if you don't watch out, 
this really bad thing is going to happen to you. And so that warning about the really bad thing is meant to produce some kind of fear that would lead you in the right path. Just like they would have when you're driving up a mountain and you could fall off the side of the mountain, the side of the road, they have many warning signs. Take this turn slower, warning, watch out, uh, sheer fall off, dramatic drop, you know, intense decline. The, yeah, I don't wanna fall off the cliff. Those warning signs are meant to keep me on the road. So a fear of something bad happening. I mean, this goes back to basic parenting. I have a fear of my kids running into the street when they're little kids, so I warn them. I have a fear of sharks, so I don't go swimming out into the ocean. A fear is in a lot of ways a very healthy thing because it keeps you on a safe path. That's what we're saying here. I wanna enter the rest of God. I wanna see the glory of Jesus. If Jesus is greater, I wanna be with him for eternity, and I'm afraid of not entering into the rest of Jesus. That's how this starts. And, and getting to this idea, they are not going to enter the rest. And so even here, he's still quoting Psalm 95 in today's chapter, Hebrews 4. So maybe it was great that we ended up doing Hebrews 3 and 4 together in one video because it's all one explanation of this one Psalm 95. And if you go back to the context of Psalm 95, it's an invitation. Come and let us worship. Come before the Lord. Come into his glorious presence. But people aren't coming to God. They're actually falling away. You should be afraid of falling away in that same way. You want to enter the rest. And so look at verse 11. Here's another subject, subjunctive tense here in the Greek. So this is something that might happen, that may happen. It says, let us therefore strive to enter that rest. We are now able to enter that rest. So we might be able to do that. So let's strive to do it. I want to get into the rest. I have a fear of falling away and I have a desire to be with the Lord. And so now I'm seeking to enter into that rest. Now, after it says this, that we don't want to fall like the, like the same sort of disobedience that the Israelites did. Remember, that generation never made it into the promised land. They had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years, and then the next generation was led by Joshua into the promised land. So we don't want to miss the rest of God. We want to make it to the promised home that he has for us in heaven. And so we've got to strive to enter that rest. Now, after it says strive to enter that rest, there's two very interesting things that it gets to here in Hebrews 4. Two things that Hebrews 4 is actually famous for. The first one is in verses 12 and 13, where it talks about the Word of God is living and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And the Word of God can cut to parts of you. It talks about a separation of soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow. I don't even know if there is a separation of the soul and spirit. The point here is it gets to the deepest part of who you are. It gets to who you really are on the inside. So one way that you're gonna end up falling away rather than entering the rest is if you stop letting God's word do its work in your heart. God's word is meant to cut us, to convict us. The Holy Spirit, he is meant to show us our sinful ways and then lead us in the way everlasting. So you're gonna start drifting and towards falling away when you stop letting God's word do its work in your heart. That's why we're here reading the Bible together day by day. And hopefully, we're not just doing this thing where we read it, we check it off, we go through the motions, but we're actually realizing I could fall away. I know people who've fallen away. And I got to make sure that I'm letting God's word cut to who I really am, show me my sin so that I will turn from my sin in repentance and I'll be led in the way that God wants me to go. Then in verses 14 to 16, it talks about then, like verse 16 is this third let us statement in Hebrews 4. So today's chapter has three. One, let us fear falling away. Two, let us strive to enter that rest. And how do we do that? Well, three, verse 16, let us then with confidence confidence draw near to the throne of grace. That's talking about prayer. That's talking about how you can go into the presence of God right now and Jesus will intercede for you as your high priest. That's going to become the big theme moving forward that Jesus is not only greater than Moses, he's greater than all the priests, all the high priests that they used to have in the old covenant. But right now, 
you can go before the throne of grace. You can find mercy to help you. Whatever you're going through today, you don't have to drift. You don't have to fall away because you can draw near to God. You can pray. Like I've, it is when people stop praying, that's when they start falling away. I can just tell you from the intimate encounters I've had with friends of mine who have fallen away from the faith, they, they weren't really going before God in prayer. And so I want to encourage you. You got to pray just to make it today. You got to pray every day. You got to go into the presence. That's how you find mercy. That's how there's grace to help you in your time of need. Are you letting God's word do its work in your heart? And are you going to God? Just watching these videos does not do it. That's what we're learning here from Hebrews 4. And I mean, first of all, I hope that people do watch these videos because I hope they're a means of encouragement to spur them on. And this is a daily form of encouragement. But what really matters is getting God's word to cut to my heart and then going to God in prayer, bringing the realities of my heart before him. What are the things I'm convicted of? What are the things that feel overwhelming? What are the challenges, the obstacles that, that are ahead of me that I'm not sure how I'm going to overcome? I need to go to the throne of grace. Jesus will claim me as his own. He'll intercede for me and God will give me what I need. There is grace and mercy running after you today and to get it, all you've got to do is pray. So I hope this encourages you. I want to warn you that falling away is something that happens at our church, among us. It happens with people in your fellowship group right now. It happens with someone you know. It could happen to you. I hope you'll hear the strong warning of Hebrews and you will take it to heart. So if you could leave a comment down below on this video and encourage me not to fall away, I'm trying to encourage you not to fall away. What is your plan to watch out to be warned so you won't fall away. What are you gonna do in response to Hebrews 3 and 4 today so that you will watch out to make sure you don't fall away, but you strive to enter that rest. You get the word convicting your heart. You get into God's presence in prayer. What is your plan today? Leave a comment down below. Let's keep encouraging one another and let's see one another for more here on Scripture of the Day.